Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On and this is our first season 2016-17 regular Monday format. Five things we learned and of course it's five things we learned from the match at Goodison Park where it finished Everton 1, Tottenham Hotspur 1. So let's get straight into it. I'm afraid it's got to start with a negative and that is set pieces. Only four or five minutes in. We gave away a foul, or at least it was a judge to have been a foul by Victor Wanyama, about 15 yards outside the box, and immediately I had my heart in my mouth. And that's not just because there are always dangerous free kicks from that area in any game of football, it's because I feel Tottenham Hotspur over the last, certainly six, eight months, but maybe even realistically all last season, have not looked good at defending set pieces. I know Richard Pochettino chooses to use a zonal marking formation. I'd be interested to know from you guys in the comment section below whether you think that is the correct way of dealing with set pieces but I have to say it almost felt inevitable that that goal was going in obviously I didn't know that it was going to go straight in from Ross Barkley without being headed in by anyone um, and people did get on Hugo's back about that which I have to say I disagree with as I'm sure any of you know who've watched the channel a lot uh, I play in goal I certainly used to play in goal and they are the hardest things to deal with because right up until the moment it crosses over the head of the last attacker or defender, you cannot make a move. So basically what Hugo's being asked to do there is to be instinctive and make a reaction save based on a ball bouncing probably only seven or eight yards in front of him on the skid from a freshly watered bit of turf because the game had only just started and it went right in the corner, right in the side netting. So those pundits who've been saying Hugo should have got that, I couldn't disagree more. However, what I do think is that the, the zonal marking and the depth that the players were, they were along the 18-yard line. It just didn't work. They didn't drop off quick enough when the ball was about to be struck, and we really need to be clearing those balls. I can tell you um, the Atletico Madrid match in pre-season, we conceded from a set piece. Obviously, the Chelsea game when we were 2-0 up in the Battle of Stamford Bridge last year, their first goal, I think it was, was from a set piece, a, a kind of mix-up, uh, goal mouse scramble or penalty box scramble from a corner. And, of course, the West Brom game towards the end of last season where we drew when we were 1-0 up at home. That goal came from a set piece as well. They're just the ones I can pick out from the top of my head. That is too many goals in the last few important games for us to be conceding from set pieces. So what can we do about it? Well, first and foremost, you need to stop giving away those kind of free kicks. I know a lot of people thought Wanyama's foul wasn't even a foul. But the reality is, when you're getting in towards 15, 20 yards away from the 18-yard box, Players who are attacking you are looking to go down. They are looking to win free kicks there. So you've got a lot of the time, especially the fullbacks here and the defensive midfielders, um, because centre backs, especially Toby and Jan, don't tend to dive in as much. You've just got to keep your arms out and just jockey and jockey and jockey. I need to see more of that. Eric Dyer stays on his feet pretty well, so we need to make sure we're not kind of trying to get little kicks in ahead of the strikers if they're, they're back to uh, if they're backs to goal or trying to uh, you know, make, a, make a tackle when a guy's trying to beat you. Just jockey the player. We need to see more of that. Less free kicks given away around that uh, part of the, of the pitch. And of course, corners, we're not that great at defending corners either. So we just need to really sharpen up on that. Obviously, I'm not on the training ground every day, so I can't really suggest things. I don't really know, you know what they do and don't practice. But like I said before, I'd be interested to know how many of you guys think that maybe going man to man would work better. I certainly wouldn't uh, bet against Toby Alderweireld winning every man-to-man -man duel and Jan's pretty good in the air as well. Eric Dyer is too. However, you know, these things happen, they go in waves, so maybe now, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we'll go quite a long time without conceding a second piece, so uh, a set piece. So that was my first thing that I felt we learnt again uh, from the Everton Spurs game. Set pieces defensively not quite up to scratch. Second thing I want to talk about in terms of things we learnt, Vincent Janssen. I think he could make the difference this year. Obviously, a lot of people have talked about this, and it's true. Last season, when Harry wasn't quite scoring, certainly the first eight games uh, and the last few games, uh, when he wasn't scoring, we didn't really have the presence to bring someone off the bench to either help him out or to give him a rest. We had Clinton and G. He'd played quite a bit in the Europa League, but he looked very raw. And uh, Sonny played up front a few times. He certainly played uh, up front in the last game, or he, pl he played just behind the front man in the last uh, game we played against Chelsea in the Battle of Stamford Bridge, and he scored a good goal there, actually. But never did we have a target man of Harry's ilk to come in and help him out or give him a rest. And Vincent Janssen came on, obviously I've seen him in pre-season as well, and his back-to-goal play is absolutely top-notch. He's very sharp, he makes good runs in between the lines and also down the channels. He was doing very well. That cutback, that the, pretty much the first thing he did when he came on, 
He got to the byline and cut it right back for Deli Ali, who should have done better with his shot. Lots of that stuff uh, was really, really impressive. I know a lot of the fans who we interviewed after the game, very impressed with both Vincent Janssen and Victor Wanyama. The other thing about Janssen is, he does look like a natural finisher to me. A lot of people saying he should have scored that one that Stecklenburg saved. The ball was stuck under his feet. And frankly, the only reason he got that shot off was because his first touch was so good. He took a touch and there was a player diving in at him and then he rolled his foot over the ball to get it a bit away from him. He couldn't do much more because players were coming in from the side as well and he got his shot off. It really was an excellent instinctive reaction save from Stecklenburg. And any other day, you know, any other keeper that may well have gone in and Vincent Janssen would have ended up winning the game for Spurs, which in that second half, we kind of deserved to get a couple of goals in that second half. However, I would go with what Ronald Koeman said and said, and say we were pretty lucky not to go in 2-0 down after the first half when uh, Michelle Vorm, who doesn't get enough credit either, made a great save from Delefeu after Danny Rose mishit his, uh, his pass back. But Vincent Janssen, like I said, just going on to the second thing that I felt we learned, just looks like a, a really good signing at about £18 million, especially if you think about think that really transfer fees in this market are basically double what they were a year ago because of the TV deal. So that's really a £9 million signing for Spurs in the current market. Uh, 18 million obviously in real terms, but uh, a fantastic signing. It'd be great if we could get an early goal, ideally on Saturday against Palace. We need Harry to score an early goal as well, I think. The thing with Harry is when he's not scoring, sometimes he looks like he's a bit tired and people are very quick to get on his back about that. But as soon as he gets one, he will be buzzing again and uh, getting in those right positions instinctively. Uh, anyway, that was the second thing I felt that we learned. Vincent Janssen could be great for us, could really make the difference. Third up, I want to talk about Eric Lamella. I think he's poised for his best ever season in a Spurs shirt. This is a far cry from a year ago. And if you look back at videos, I was saying, I'm not sure whether Lamella's ever going to make it. His decision making isn't there. Uh, he's trying to dribble when he should be passing. He's trying to pass when he should be dribbling. But first and foremost, the reason why I think he is poised to have his best ever season is just because he learned, not long into last season to be honest, because he had a great season, but he learned that if his work rate is 110% every game, then Spurs fans will cheer him and applaud him almost more than when he does some kind of flary flick or whatever. I know Spurs are renowned down the years to dare us to do and we want stuff to look great. And that's absolutely right. But Eric Lamella knows that if he works hard, puts his tackles in, uh, and really works back and forward for the team, then he will get the props from the crowd. He gets that big, big chanting and uh, chanting his name, always take Lamella with you and everything like that. And then from that, uh, he breeds confidence, he gets confidence from that and then his game on the ball improves as well. And in terms of the header, he scored to equalise for Spurs against Everton at the weekend. That was terrific, instinctive uh, attacking midfield play. He saw the ball at Kyle Walker's feet, he made a tiny little dart, dart ahead of the defender, I think it was Tommy Holgate uh, from Everton. And then there was still lots of hard work to do because he got there, it, it came over, I think Janssen's head, so he only saw it late and a downward header into the far corner, giving the keeper absolutely no chance. Terrific attacking midfield play. Any striker would be happy with that finish as well. And that just shows that Eric Lamella is confident. He had an excellent pre-season. That goal he scored against Inter Milan, where he was straight, central to the goal, just a couple of seconds to hit it, hit it and curled it around the keeper. If that had been in a Premier League game, people would be absolutely raving about it. So I'm excited to see how Lamella does. I hope he has a good game against Crystal Palace. Maybe gets another goal. He could end up scoring... 10, 15 goals. I think he got 11 last season. If he could get to 15 goals from attacking midfield, that would really put him in play to get into the uh, Premier League team of the season. So third point I want to talk about, Eric Lamella, poised for his best season ever. Fourth thing I want to talk about in terms of things we learned, this is something that I've been thinking about for quite a while. I just don't think Spurs put enough crosses in the box. Like I just mentioned there, Eric Lamella scored a great goal from it. I think the only reason that ball went in the box from Danny Rose is because Janssen had come along uh, come on alongside Harry Kane so we had more people in there we had four players in the box and therefore it was worth putting a cross in a lot of times though when Danny Rose and Kyle Walker get out wide there's just not enough in the box to make it worthwhile than putting a cross in so we come back and back again and start playing along outside the 18 yard box looking for gaps now of course that's how it works I'm sure they train it every day but I do think we look dangerous when we get crosses in I think Danny Rose and Kyle Walker's crossing has improved a lot Back end of last season, they really started to uh, do what Janssen did, actually, that I mentioned before when he got to the byline. Get to the byline, pull it back for the attacking midfielders to come onto. And it just goes, you know, it's understated how much defences hate 
defending against good crossing. You don't know where the cross is coming, so you haven't got really uh, enough time to prepare for it, especially when you're cutting it back like that. I just think we need to be getting more crosses in, as many as we can, because sometimes it can look a bit slow and stale when we're playing it around the 18-yard box too much. So I'd like to see against Palace, let's get down those flanks early with Danny and Carl and whip some crosses in, make them defend. Because also, when you're getting crosses in uh, across the box, across the front into the uh, no man's land between the keeper and the centre backs, best the defenders can often do is just whip it out for a corner. And then we'll, we'll put them under pressure as well. We know Toby can win lots of headers from corners, so can Eric Dyer across the front post. And that could be where goals come from. Against Palace, we don't want it to become a nervy affair. A nice early goal or two, that would be great. So let's really attack, get the crosses in, and I think if we put more crosses in this season, especially with Vincent potentially playing alongside Harry, if Harry were to drop in, let's say, for instance, you know, Harry were to drop in and uh, Victor Wanyama were not to start with Eric Dyer in defensive midfield, uh, Deli Ali in central midfield, and then Harry maybe drops behind Vincent Janssen, we'll have automatically more men in the box, get more crosses too, and I think that way we would score goals. Let me know if you think we would score more goals if we got more crosses in, if that would suit our play a bit more. Or if I'm wrong and Richard Pochettino's got it right, we get down in the flanks and then bring it back and try and make space in the centre. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Anyway, fourth thing I, f fourth thing I felt we learned from Saturday again was that are we bit, a bit afraid of crosses? Finally, my final point, and I alluded it to there, I wonder, and I hope to be proven wrong, I'm sure I am, but either way it's good backup, but Victor Wanyama and Eric Dyer may be a bit too similar to both be able to play in those two central midfield positions. What you need is you need a defensive midfielder and then the guy who can play in the pivot. Now, of course, we know we've got Moussa Dembele to play there and I'm sure that after the rest of his three-game ban is over, he will be back in that position. So it will be between Wanyama and Dyer to fight that out. But as I said in my fourth point, I wonder if against Palace, whether Pochettino will try bringing Deli Alli in alongside Eric Dyer, then Harry Kane will play just off uh, Vincent Janssen up front with, Deli, uh, with um, Christian Eriksen and Eric Lamella either side of him. It would be a brave one because obviously if we were to go down a goal down early, the crowd would get on the backs saying that's not work, let's stick to what we know. Excuse me, but I think it might be worth trying. Uh, I really do, especially because Vincent Janssen looks so sharp and also because Victor Wanyama and Eric Dyer, to me, were kind of swimming in the same waters a little bit, trying to pick up the second balls in the same area. And that led a lot of the time for the, that Gareth Barry was free to pick up second balls when they were playing long balls up to Delafeu that then uh, Toby Alderweireld and Jan Vertonghen were heading out. I found then both Eric and Victor were a bit too deep, uh, not able to pick up those second balls as maybe Musa Dembele would. Anyway, guys, that's just what I think. Let me know what you think. Who would you play on Saturday against Crystal Palace? What would your formation be? Are we going to get the win? Let's not forget we didn't get a win for four games last season. Harry Kane didn't score for eight games. So how good would it be to get an early victory in a London derby on Saturday, go on to four points after two games, heading into the Liverpool game after that? Can we do that? Who would you play? Uh, for that game, let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Spurred On TV. And most importantly, get behind the boys. Come on, you Spurs. Hi, guys. Barnaby for Spurred On. This is my match review after Everton won Tottenham Hotspur won at Goodison Park. The opening day of the season, oh, it was stressful. I'll tell you that. The, uh, there was a lot of impatience 